tactic that Scotland obviously will use a lot today to try and get past the great height of Wade Dooley and of Maurice Colclough, six feet eight and six feet five, five and a half. Ian Milne working hard here on Paul Rendell, those two. And a penalty to the Scots. I think against the collapsed scrimmage. The second of the four Hastings brothers in line. Hastings then, he stroked it well, straight down the funnel. You can see the little jump in his step and the great waving of flags here as Scotland take the lead. And here it is, absolutely beautifully struck there by Hastings that uh, certainly he's put the uh, bad memories of his poor kicking in Cardiff behind him because that was an excellent kick into quite a severe breeze. Got a good heel and a good steady scrummage. Melville with that very quick pass. Misses his man all the same. Halliday is very strong. But what a tackle by Rutherford. Ian Milne knocked over. Pick up by Dooley. Good tackle there by Campbell. But a penalty. Six internationals. This is seven. Andrew then to tie the score. That looks better. Oh, it's a beauty. And having missed the first two, it doesn't bother this lad. You know, gives it a really good belt, that one. No problem at all. But I think England were a little lucky to get the penalty because the referee missed a, a knock-on by an England forward prior to Wade Dooley being tackled in that offside position. And uh, I think... The best, one of the best scrum halves uh, that England have seen for many, many years. Deans again doing away with the line-out. Winterbottom couldn't quite hold it. It's a penalty, but a bit of obstruction. And a real chance for Scotland to take the lead. The laws of the game are such that goal kickers have such an important part to play, perhaps too important a part. However, there's the shot from behind the uh, terracing. Hastings all the way, Scotland lead 6-3, 28 minutes of the first half gone, Winterbottom can't pick up, Calder does, and Calder charges, up to halfway, Scottish forward mobility there, Laidlaw nicely out, Johnston, Johnston away, Johnston back inside, taken by Gavin Hastings, Hastings back outside to Baird, Baird, oh what a tackle by Jamie Salmon, I think everybody thought that Roger Baird was going to score his first try in 23 internationals. The penalty has been given for the high tackle by Jamie Salmon. Immediately. Gavin Hastings. The flags are up again. Three penalty goals for Gavin Hastings. And Scotland leading nine points to three. Ten minutes to go to half time. Relaxed again, no pressure whatsoever, and slotted it straight between that uh, he'll be highly delighted with the first half so far. So an important throw for Colin Thomas Deans. Keeping it short, Melville, but Finlay Calder did well. Down goes Paxton. And it's a penalty against the Scots. Rob Andrew prepares to try this penalty. Well, it's over, but it wasn't one of his best, but it counts, and he'll be very relieved, the young fella. Great bulk of Ian Milne, uh, great bulwark in the Scottish back on this side of the front row. Battling away against uh, Paul Rendell. Those two haven't played against each other before, although they both play for London clubs. Penalty to Scotland. It's a long effort. Gavin Hastings has got the distance. That is a magnificent kick. A fourth penalty goal for Gavin Hastings. Scotland leading 12-6. And this was a very long kick indeed. He was almost on the 10 meters line, but he had all the height and the distance. And well, it was plumb. You can't get them better than that. 
caught by Redmond, gives it on to Finlay Calder. BT once more. Deans. Deans thumping on. Great play by the Scottish forwards. Now it's Laidlaw. Rutherford. Rutherford held by Andrew that time. It's Laidlaw again. Out to Gavin Hastings. The chance for Matt Duncan. It's a try. It's a super drive again, and John Rutherford tries a little break on his own. But notice how he keeps the ball, how he retains possession. It's important that he makes it available. The English forwards are committed. Roy Laidlaw makes a super little break there, and a lovely pass there. He commits the man, and there's sort of Matt Duncan to fly in for his second try for Scotland. A score that's come out of well-deserved pressure by the Scottish forwards. England won last season by 10-7 at Twickenham. Gavin Hastings. Certainly high enough. Oh, he can't miss. Deans again using Beatty at the tail. Rutherford. Milne. The 17 or 18 stones of Milne rumbles on. Calder takes it. Deans holds it in. And there must may have been a little bit of handling in that ruck when the ball went on the floor. It's a penalty to the Scots. And Scotland have a 12-point margin. And uh, this, if this went over as the English forwards watch, they have to stand motionless, of course, with their arms by their sides. Hastings, dead straight. He's done it again. Scotland 21-6 in the lead, and they've 15 minutes to go. Robbins uh, trying to loosen the ball. Winterbottom, big strong lad from Headingley. In there to Rendell. They've cleared it 15 or 20 metres. This is Coldclough. The loose ball as Calder goes. Calder on. Well out there to Laidlaw. Laidlaw to Rutherford. Rutherford must score. That's the clincher. The Scots are simply thrilled. A brilliant try by John Rutherford. His seventh for Scotland, equaling Herbert Waddle's record for the Scottish standoff. And it looked as if England were going to break away. Paul Rendell was up in support. Morris Colclough. And it was that bad pass that gave Calder the chance. Now this was Beatty rowing on. Laidlaw took it. And then watch how Rutherford cleverly wrong-footed four Englishmen and sped in past Robbins' tackle. A super try, that. And uh, if Gavin Hastings kicks this, this will be the biggest margin that Scotland have had over England. Well, as I said, he, he can't miss almost. Colclough. Now built a winter bottom. On to Colclough. 18 stones on the hoof. Beard picks up and he's gone. Beard is away. Great tackle there by Salmon, taken on by Beatty. Calder driving on. A great Scottish break out as Beatty goes and Jeffrey running. Out to Scott Hastings and Scott Hastings has scored. Oh, what a magnificent try that was. And what a moment for the 21 year old. The feet are tapping, the flags are in the air. And that was quite superb. They're simply thrilled. It was the support work after Big Morris Goldcliffe lost possession. Baird had a superb run. Lovely acceleration. It was a great bit of cover by Jamie Salmon. But Baird keeping the ball alive. And Beatty feeding Calder. Now there was still an awful lot to do. John Beatty, number eight. What a game he's played today. Off he went again. Jeffrey was there. Rutherford took it, and then the little juggle by Scott Hastings, but that's not a knock-on if it doesn't hit the ground. Simply marvellous. And Gavin Hastings has put the conversion over. And Scotland have won an astounding victory. The scenes of delight here, well, just look at them. And Alex Brewster and John Rutherford, the try-scorer there, 
simply overjoyed. That is Scotland's biggest victory ever over England. And who would have believed it? 33 points to six. And there, John Beatty, who's had such a part to play in this tremendous match. It just goes to show how up and down international rugby can be. But the uh, spirit that those Scots forwards displayed throughout the match, taking on much bigger and heavier fellows. And uh, the English, of course, naturally downcast. This is an awful thumping 33-6. But it was done with some brilliant rugby football and some really great support work. <laughs>